Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, put those hands together this morning. Oh, that sounded kind of weak. That sounded really, really weak. But God has truly blessed us. And here's how I know you've been blessed. I always tell you, if I can see you and you can see me, we're doing pretty good. Because I've learned that every day above ground is a good day. And we are all here on this morning to glorify and magnify our Lord. How many of you know we serve a good God? You know we serve a good God. We hadn't always been good, y'all. We have not always been good. But he has always looked beyond all of our faults mm, and saw our needs. And I don't know about you this morning, but I need him. I said, I need him. I need him because I realize that this race, this race of life is too difficult for me alone. We have to have the Lord on our side. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where in the world would we be? Oh, come on, y'all. Where would we be this morning if it had not been for the Lord on our side? The devil didn't want you to make it here this morning. I want you to know that. He didn't want to see you come through the doors of the house of the Lord. But I heard David say, David said, if I could just get to the house of the Lord, everything's going to be all right. If I could just get to my people, if I could just get to my God, everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're now getting ready for our call to worship. We're getting ready for our call to worship this morning. Our call, call to worship will be Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It'll be on the screen for those of you uh, so that you will be able to see it. Colossians 3. Listen at the words. Listen at the words. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord not to us but to the Lord and whatsoever ye do in word or deed listen people do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him hallelujah if we do that if we obey that to this morning we're going to have a awesome time if we sing I told them I told them on Bible study on Wednesday I told them when we do things we have an audience of one we have an audience of one and if your audience is the Lord Jesus Christ you do it for him everything else is going to work out whether you sing whether you pray whether you usher whatever it is you got an audience of one. If we start looking for our rewards down here, what did he tell them? You already got it. When you, when, you, when you see me, you already got your rewards. So we don't look for them here. We like to be acknowledged. We like to be admonished. But if we are not, it means you drive on, you push on. Hallelujah. Our deacons are now coming. We are going to have a spirited devotion on this morning. Hallelujah. They are now coming and we are going to have a spirited devotion. We're going to open our mouths this morning. We're going to praise. We're going to magnify our God because he is worthy of all of our praise. That church say amen. Amen. Say it one more time. Hallelujah. Good to be in the house of prayer one more time. Yes. Good to be at Smith Chapel. Mm. And we just gonna go way up back. That's all right. You know, sometimes you had to leave home to get something. 
Don't get me wrong. Big money had to come to the country. Yeah, yeah. Last week I was down in South Georgia, somewhere Hazel hurt. Hazel hurt. I told young lady I ain't seen this so long. You take your shoes off. <laughs> That's how good it was. So, let me say this. Uh, you know, I was at a funeral yesterday, and, and the preacher said something that touched me. You know, we, we, we can't put, we can't get in church at a funeral, but God gonna bless us to open the door of the church from COVID, but we can't come in the house of the Lord. Say amen. amen. We had to put the mask on, we had to do all that, but God been so good. Yes, he has. Only though, we want to come in and praise. Hallelujah. So we're going we're gonna to sing this old song. I want you to help me. I just love this song. I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to sing this Smith chapter like we used to. I love Jesus. Oh, I Everybody, oh yeah. Ah. 
continue on with the service. From made maybe change songs that he went into mine. <laughs> so I'm going to go on here uh, with uh, hymn number four, six. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. Come on, sir. What a privilege to carry. Yes, yes, sir. Everything to God. Everything. Oh, what peace we often for. Mm -hmm. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Mm -hmm. All because yes, we do I not I care. I Everything I to God in prayer. Amen. What school this morning. I come out, Father, to hear the word yeah, yeah, that was yeah. being taught 
by the Sunday school teacher. Well, well. And Father, Father, you know, I just give it all up to you this morning, yeah, yeah, Father. Yeah. Because, Father, as I stand before you to talk to you this yes, morning. Well, pray, Father, pray, pray. Uh, Father, I just stand in, Father, yeah, yeah. asking you, Father, mm -hmm. to lead and guide no, me, worse, Father. Because, Father, you know what I need yeah, yeah. better than you I know. know what to ask you yeah. for. Yes, sir. Yeah. Father, right. as I stand, I stand leaning and yeah, depending yeah. on yeah. you, yeah. Father. Yeah. Because, Father, Father, there's no other Father that has the strength and the power, Father, to continue to yeah, yeah. hold this world. Well, because, Father, without you, Father, we are nobody. nobody. And, Father, Father, you said with you all things yeah, yeah. are possible, right. Father. Right. And, Father, that's how I know oh, no other way to turn well, but towards you. Yeah, yeah. And, Father, for that, Father, I give you all the thanks, Father. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you. I praise you, Father, every time I get a oh, chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because, Father, in praising you, Father, yeah, yeah. it gives me, Father, the word on high, Father. Yeah, yeah. It, Father, it let me see, Lord, Father, what this heaven. mean old world yes, is sir. done for me, Father. Well, and so, Father, I praise to you, Father, mm. that you touch each and every one yeah, on the yeah, sound yeah. of my weak voice yeah, this morning. Yeah, yeah. Father, you know what we all are, Father, and you know what we're well, doing, Father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, for that, Father, I just continue to yeah, praise yeah. you more and more. Yeah. Because, Father, there's no other way no to go, other. Father, but the Father in your footsteps, well, Father. Pray, and, pray. Father, as I stand before oh, you praising this morning, mercy. Father, I pray, Father, that you continue yeah, yeah. to touch me, Father. Yeah, touch give me. me that strength, Father, to continue to follow, Father. Yeah, 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 Father, yeah. give my heart, Father, to mm. love, Father, well, to give service to yeah. everyone, yeah. Father. Everybody. Father, just help me, Father, that yeah, I yeah. may be yeah. able to do something for the sick, yeah, Father. Yeah. Yeah. Father, Father, touch me, Father, touch. that I may be able to pick up yeah. somebody well, that's yeah. leaning and depending yes, on sir. Because, Father, we know oh, you're yeah. all-knowing yeah, God, yeah. Father. Yeah. Father, you know where we're going to be tomorrow, yeah. Father, but we don't know what's the next minute. Well, so, Father, as I stand today, oh, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. I stand praising you, Father. Yeah, yeah. I stand Amen. lifting you up, yeah. Father. Father, I'm here for no form, shape, oh, or fashion, Father. But, Father, this is from the heart. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus, thank for all you. you've done, thank Father. Thank you. For your name's sake. Yeah. Amen, 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 and amen. We are climbing Jacob of oh, we, we are
truly is the highest praise that we can give God. How y'all feeling? Y'all still feeling all right this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Doris and Sister Jeanette kept us all out late last night <laughs> with the Ballad Hudson class of 1968. Hallelujah. Sneaker ball. Yeah, they had the wife and I and several others <laughs> at the sneaker ball last night. But they had a wonderful, wonderful program and it was just beautiful as to how everything was set up real real nicely trouble in my way anybody know i got to cry sometimes anybody have to cry anybody have to cry sometimes every day is not gonna be sunny there gonna be some days you gonna have to cry sometimes trouble in my way Listen, I stepped in the furnace. We're now getting ready to hear from this wonderful choir. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping. We're getting ready to hear from this choir. Hallelujah.
We are blessed. I said we are blessed. In the city, we blessed in the field. God says he'll make us the head, not the tail. The lender and not the borrower. How many of you believe that in here this morning? Hallelujah. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. Our deacons now are getting ready to come for our, our hour of giving. Deacons are now coming visiting deacons you can help as well we are always saying that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive we got to start believing that we got to start believing that because it is true it is true see we can't beat God giving no matter how hard we try we can't beat him he gave us his darling son, Jesus Christ. There is no price for that. No price. All right. God our Father truly truly you are worthy of all of our praise you continually make ways for us you continually bless our hands our mouths our feet you give us sight in order that we might be able to do those things that's productive and we can bring food into your house Father, I always ask that if you breathe, things are multiplied. Breathe now, for it's in the precious, perfect, powerful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. The choir is getting ready to come back, but before they come, just want to say a word about our preacher today. He really needs no introduction. He really needs no presentation. But I just want to let you know that uh, he's our very own. He's Smith Chapel's very own. He has dedicated 
really his entire life to this church. And we are so proud as to what God is doing in his life. You know, he's not old, he's seasoned. He's seasoned. He is seasoned. And see, and you can't stop what God's doing. I don't care who you are. When he came and, and laid on my heart what God had laid on his heart, I immediately said, let's go. Let's do it. Because you can't stop what God's doing. He has a passion for people. He loves people and he loves to help. He pointed out to us very early in his ministry that his ministry would be beyond these four walls. Hallelujah, somebody. God needs ministry to go beyond these four walls and began to touch and magnify his name throughout his creation. And he will definitely do that. So after our choir sings, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Minister Wallace Maynard, Jr. Hear ye him.
children that sit in the midst and wherever our voice may be heard let us pray O oh, gracious and eternal God our heavenly father we come now in the presence of your people and before your holy throne with thanksgiving in our heart and praises on our tongue. We just thank you, our Father, for clothing us in our right mind, helping us to know who you are. And we just want to say thank you, sir. And Father, as we stand before your people this morning, we ask you, Lord, that thou would Open up our ears to hear. Open our hearts to receive your word. Pray our Father that some lives may be changed. Some minds may be regulated. Some hearts may be fixed. Some souls may be saved we know you can do it we thank you sir it's in Jesus name we pray amen we thank God for enabling us to be here on this day and fulfill the word that we had put out we just want to say thank you, Lord. We thank those that are present here today. We'll say this before we forget to say it. Though we're glad to see each of you, my cousin and her husband back there. My son from Milledgeville talked to him last night. And uh, my friends over here sometimes, I don't know, can't get names out all the time, but we're glad to see each of you here today we pray that the Lord will have something said that will help you think along your way the words of this hymn came to mind and it kind of coincides with our message for today we just want to read the words and I ask you to pay attention to what the words Say it's one of the old hymns of the church. I wish we could still sing like we used to sing those old hymns. And I will say, <clears throat> eyes get kind of shady sometimes going through our surgery, but I'm not complaining at all. I just thank God I can open my eyes and my mouth. The hymn of this writer says it's unknown as to who wrote it but it says amazing sight the Savior stands and knocks at every door 
10,000 blessings in his hand to satisfy the poor. Behold, he saith, I bleed and die to bring you to my rest. Hear sinners while I'm passing by and be forever blessed. It goes on to say, why will you despise my bleeding love and choose your way to hell? Are in the glorious realms above with me forever dwell. So will you hear my gracious voice and have your sins forgiven? Or will you make that wretched choice and bar yourselves from heaven? What a word within itself. If we would take that in, it's we're living in some serious times. And God is depending on his people to bring some of his children home. Satan is loading up his train, y'all. He's driving a freight train. Freight trains carries freight. Passenger trains carries passengers. You can get on and off. But Satan's freight train is headed straight to the junkyard. Nobody on that train will be able to get off. Thank God for his word. Our message today comes from the book of Revelations chapter 12. And it says, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We just want to say this. We may not dwell directly on this verse, but I do want to point out a couple of things what it's saying us. It says a tail drew the third part. That don't mean the kind of a tail like an animal is dragging behind him, but you know how we used to tell these fairy tales, these untrue stories, but make believe. So this is summer. Satan's storytelling. And the dragon that stood before the woman to devour her child as soon as it were born. That is like Satan. No, Israel was expecting a king. And Satan wanted to kill the king well, yes. before he even got here. Right. Satan wants to have power, y'all. That's what our message is about. Yes. Satan wants to stay in power. That's right. well, it also refers our mind to, we are familiar with Herod, yes. the king. He wanted to know where Jesus was born. He didn't want to worship the Lord. He wanted to destroy him. So 
just wanted to kind of point out what this verse is saying to us. And our message is titled, Satan's Plot. Satan has a plot. In other words, he's working daily to carry out the mission of Satan. When God created the universe, he also created millions of angels to be his assisted messengers and helpers. See, when God created the heaven and the earth, he created everything at the same time. Us, uh, angels are created beings. They are not male or female. They are not reproductive. He created all of them at one time. We've heard the song and we sing it sometimes all night and all day. The angels watches over me. So we must believe that there are angels. I don't know who is here today other than myself. But Boo Boo, your granddaddy, Brother Love Carver. I know in the old building over there, I don't know whether he made it to the new building or not. But he used to sit over here on the first pew. And his song was, I got a good mind to count them angels. See how many in the band. So that lets us know that there's always been angels. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 15 it said thy was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou were created till iniquity was found in thee all angels were created by God and everything God created was good. We are familiar with the name Lucifer. We've heard it many times and we've heard about Satan. But I don't know if everybody, if all of us actually know where Satan actually comes from. Everything has a start. So Ezekiel just said to us that thou was perfect in thy ways. God created all angels perfect. It said until iniquity was found in thee. Lucifer became so proud of himself. He decided he should sit on God's throne and rule the universe. That's Satan, y'all. He was able to persuade perhaps as many as one third of the angels to join him in this huge double cross rebellion against God. We see that in Revelation in the fourth chapter. It said he was able to persuade a third part of the stars. And when we see stars in the Bible, that represents angels. So that's what that means. It said in committing this evil act, Lucifer brought himself down to the lowest of all beings. His character and his personality 
changed to pure evil and hate. He became the ultimate instigator of all sin and evil. He was given a name that well fits his personality. Satan. Satan means enemy, adversary of God. Satan has many names. He's a deceiver. He's a tempter. Accuser. He's the father of all lies. His five things about Satan. Mm -hmm. If you can get Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 14 on the screen. I encourage people to always read the Bible. Read along with what you are hearing and hopefully you will read the whole story sometimes when you get back home. You know I wouldn't mind sometimes my number being up there, I'd love for you to call me and we talk about the word sometimes. Hallelujah. Keep you from gossiping about other folks. <laughs> Good word. <laughs> but anyway, as we consider Isaiah chapter 14, mm -hmm. verses 12 through 14. Verses 12 through 14. Five things about Satan that says, I will. Verse 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, say in thine heart, say in, say in my heart, in my heart. Right. have to think about what you say now. He says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, Satan. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan is putting on his trick here. As we go on, it says the angels who joined Lucifer mm -hmm. in his rebellions against God became fallen angels, mm -hmm. demons, demons, evil and unclean spirits. Well, well, no. Although Lucifer was very intelligent, mm -hmm. he was not all wise. Uh, he would have realized that the created being, which is himself, could not overpower and replace his creator, who is God. God threw Satan and his demons out of heaven into hell and on to the earth. I have some scriptures here to explain this to you. I won't try to explain them all right now. Mm -hmm. But I want to you know that all of the fallen angels are not in hell. Well, they are scattered across every corner of the earth. Well, Is they hanging around my house? 
Are they inside of my house? But we have to watch Satan. Our topic is to understand Satan's plot. Many believers have the wrong concept of Satan's power. They may think in somehow he's parallel or equal as a powerful God. But Satan is far more powerful, personal, and conniving than many believe. We need to be very careful not to dream or even think of giving Satan more credit than he is due. Why he is tremendously strong, he's armed and dangerous, he is in no wise equal with the Most High God. The Lord maintains authority over all powers and principalities. Satan is mere just a created being. But that does not mean that he is not a threat. At our strongest moments, we ain't no match with Satan. Only the Almighty God has power over Satan. And we as Christians, we walk in the victory that Christ won for us only when we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's the only way we can handle Satan is in the power and the might of our almighty God. Christ himself refers to Satan as the prince of this world system. We find that in St. John chapter 12, verses 31, chapter 16, verse 11. He also portrays Satan as already defeated. Do we know Satan is already defeated? Well, you can't let him be controlling your life if you know he's already defeated. So, but just listen. Why is a defeated enemy so hard at work in a post Calvary world? This may help a little bit. In the United States of America, election occurs in November but the new president don't assume his position until January. We'll see if this makes a little sense a little later. I, I believe in a literal range of Christ on earth. I am convinced that the scripture teaches that Christ Jesus will visibly return to earth and will rule in righteousness for a thousand years. The scripture teaches that every eye shall see him. Every tongue shall confess that he is the Son of God. Also, I believe that the scroll in Revelation chapter 5 describes somewhat the title deed to this world system. But God committed that authority into the hands of Satan for a time when man was forced 
to Exodus, the Garden of Eden. You see, when Adam messed up, he had to leave the garden. But one day soon, God will place that title deed back into the hands of his rightful ruler. As God has attained, he has ordained his own time for Christ to return to the earth. We sang the song sometimes, be ready when he comes. Another part of it goes on to say, he been here one time and he's coming again. When he comes, will you be ready? But you see, we are now living in a period leading up to Christ returning to his throne. Since Satan is not omnipresent, his demons is at work 24 hours a day in his evil bidding. It's important for us to know Satan's purpose and his methods. We see mass shootings, police brutality, gangs all across the country. We see walls and rumors of walls everywhere. Romans chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. It tells us about men with men, women with women. Leave their natural affections, working that which is unseemly and receiving that recompense of their error which was me and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those Things which are not convenient. We see Satan is busy. We have government making laws against God's will. Do you follow the laws because they say it's, it's, it's illegal? Or do you look at what is the righteousness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Today we know that Christ is Lord of Lord and Kings of Kings. But currently his kingdom is not of this world. The day is coming when the nature of the kingdom, I'm talking about this world, is going to change. Christ, who ranges today in the hearts of the believers, he's going to range outwardly and absolutely on earth again. And when he comes, every eye is going to see him. I wonder will you be ready to receive him? Yes, yeah, Second Peter chapter three verses 
12 and 13. When Jesus appear on earth again, the heavens will disappear with a roll. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And everything on earth will be laid bare. That day will bring about destructions of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in fervent heat. But in keeping with his promise, God made a promise and he can't break his promise. But in keeping with his promise, believers are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. The home of the righteousness and all beings will be in their eternal state. All beings will be in their eternal state. I just mean, I want you to get that eternal state. From that time and forward on. Whether if you are redeemed, you'll be in the presence of God. But the unredeemed will be in the lake of fire. Now we need to think soberly because there won't be no other alternative. No other place will exist at all. This is the dressing up room right down here. Yes, I told you a little earlier that uh, the election of the United States of America is in November, but the new president don't take his duty until January. Yeah, in the 2020 election, the past president was already defeated, but he's still fighting trying to hold on to power. My illustration uh, about this e election, uh, our election that we talking about uh, took place on a hill called Calvary. Yes, Jesus paid it all. Jesus, he's the only one that has a valid claim to rule over all of creation. Jesus, when he was on his way to Calvary, he passed through the garden by the name of Gethsemane and uh, while he was in the garden praying his disciples went to sleep on him yeah when he left the garden uh, Judas his carrier uh, betrayed him with a kiss yeah, Peter denied him three times. 
Yeah, they march him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Yeah, it all happened in one night. They did not put him on death row. Pilot sent us him. Yeah, they laid a cross on his shoulder. Yeah, but I can see in my spirit a little man by the name of Simon. Seemed like something touched down in his heart and said, I must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free. He said, no, no, there is a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Yeah, Simon, he got under that cross and helped Jesus bear his cross. Yeah, and when they laid Jesus on the cross, they nailed uh, his hand. They put spikes in his feet. I wonder, can you feel uh, in your spirit how you can hear the hammer ringing as they pound uh, those nails in Jesus' feet? Yeah, but Jesus already told them. Uh, he said, uh, if you lift me up, yeah, I draw all men unto me yeah they lift him up on that cross yeah he said I thirst and they gave him vinegar yeah but he hung on that cross for three long hours yeah and he finally hung his head and he died yeah they didn't have uh, no funeral possession uh, but they took him and laid him in a barry tomb yeah and, uh, he stayed there for three days and three nights yeah, but early, yeah, on the third day morning, yeah, my God and your God, uh, he raised his son from the dead, yeah, with all power in his hand. Yeah, but ain't you glad, yeah, that God raised him up from the dead, yeah, I wonder will you be ready, yeah, when he come again, yeah, this is the dressing of room, right down here, yeah, you got to stop all your lying right down here. Stop backbiting right down here. This is the dressing of room right down here. You got to put on your helmet of salvation. Yeah, so you'll be able to think right. Yeah. Put on the breastplate of righteousness so you'll be able to live right. Yeah, put on your shoes of peace. Yeah, so you'll be able to walk right. Thank you, Lord.
Lord Yeah For your son Yeah Won't you be ready Yeah When Jesus come back Yeah I want to be ready When he comes This is the dressing up room Right down here You got to try on your own To see if it's gonna fit Try on your crown To see if it's gonna fit Put on your traveling shoes So you can travel for the Lord I wanna be ready When he comes this seal the dressing up room right down here this is the dressing up room right this is the dressing up room right down this is the dressing up room You got to go to heaven for right down here. This is the dressing up room, right? This is the dressing up room. This is the dressing up room. to go to heaven from that down here amazing sight and the Savior stands and he knocks at every door yeah ten thousand blessings in his hand to satisfy the poor This is the dressing of the road This is the dressing of the road This is the dressing of the road To go to heaven
let's give that preacher one more round of applause. Understand Satan's plot. You got to understand and realize that Satan has a plan. And unfortunately, a lot of people have fallen victim to his plan. I like when the preacher said that even at our very best, we are no match for him. The Bible even lets us know that even the very elect can be deceived. But if we keep our hand in Jesus' hand, the battle has already been fought and the victory has been won. We need to walk around with our chest stuck out just like that. Do you know who your daddy is? Do you know who your daddy is? We got a daddy that own it all. He owns everything. Hallelujah. We're now getting ready to extend the invitation. We're going to ask if you're able to stand in the church. We're going to ask that you stand. Hopefully and prayerfully, we were all listening to let us know that we don't have as long as we think we have. We don't. The sun is truly going down. And God is not speaking to us through Muhammad. He is not speaking to us through Buddha. He is speaking to us through his darling son, Jesus the Christ who hung, bled, and died that we would all have a right to the tree of life. And we're going to offer Christ. We're going to offer Christ to someone that might be here in the sanctuary. Or it could be someone that was streaming with us that's listening. Who realize and understand that you're weighted down and you don't know who to turn to. We talk to our friends and we talk to family members but they can't help you it's only Jesus that can help you come on sing it out sing it out why he will give you life abundantly all you got to do is come don't drag your feet don't drag your feet come in a hurry come in a hurry to Christ now we're gonna do that one more time like we really understand it and we really mean it come on we we
do some announcements to try to keep them in front of you. You guys know that this is a revival season. Everybody's having a revival. Invitations have gone out. And a whole lot of other stuff going on. So we're going to try to make sure again we keep these announcements out so you can hear them and see them in your presence. We've got the executive board meeting on Saturday, August 5th at 10 a.m. We're inviting, we're inviting you to come out, find out what's going on, find out what's going on. August 16th through the 18th, uh, revival at the First Baptist Church in Byron, 7 p.m. nightly. I want to make sure we understand that because we do 7.30, 7 p.m. for them. Our night, uh, they've invited us, it's on the 16th. So, 16th, if you can make it out, please, 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 ma'am, please, sir. August 17th, um, I have to preach the revival at Mount Lebanon, Mount Lebanon, and it's at 7 p.m. as well, not 7.30, 7, 7 p.m. So, we want to make sure that we go in good numbers. Our ushers are on duty. I'm preaching, and we're going to try to sing and just have a good time. All right, all right. On Monday, August the 21st, uh, also, we're in revival. I'm preaching again at Ceres Independent Church, and that is also at 7 p.m. Right. 7 p.m. We want to make sure that we go out again and have a wonderful, wonderful time. And August the 20th, we know third Sunday, that is our homecoming, and we will be having two services. We've gone to two services because we've realized that if when we do one, people can't really come because they're at their own churches and we can't expect people to leave their own church so we've gone to two services so the second service we will have pastor Derek driver and the bethel baptist church they're going to come and be with us at 2 p.m and then we follow uh, the following week with our own revival august 23rd through the 25th wednesday through friday wednesday we have Pastor Kelly out of St. James and Roberta. Thursday, we have Pastor Jimmy Lyons, uh, East Mount Sinai, if I'm not correct, if I'm correct. Uh, and Friday, we have Pastor Forrest Dickey. He will be with us from uh, St. Mark AME in Atlanta. So we're just ready to be revived. Is that all right? You're going you're gonna to see these announcements again, even if you didn't get them all today. We're going to keep them in front of you. So that you'll be, we'll probably just put them in our chat and everything so that you'll be able to get those dates and times. Okay, the executive board meeting for Mount Pleasant for the association. Yep. And the church is at Pleasant Grove in Bolingbrook. Okay, Pleasant, Pleasant Grove in Bolingbrook. Got a tongue twister here. Amen. Right. But uh, with that being said, I think we have covered all of our announcements. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together here. Bless the Lord. We're standing. We're standing, getting ready to be dismissed. We are standing. This preacher, this preacher put something in my spirit. I hope he put something in yours, something for me to think about, understanding that, that Satan is, he's a deceiver. He is really, really tricky. He is really tricky. But if we stay in the word of God again, we have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. All you got to do, he, he took you to the end of the story if you didn't know it. He took you to the book of Revelation. Just read the end of the story. And then you'll understand and realize that we are victorious. With that being said, Father God, we thank you for today. Thank you for this preacher. Thank you for the teaching that he gave us. Thank you for the words that you placed on the inside of him in order that he might be able to speak to your children. Father, you told us that sometimes we have ears, but we can't hear. Hearts, but we can't receive. And Father, I ask right now that you open our ears, open our hearts, because you told us in all thy getting, please get an understanding. We thank you now. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that we might ask or think. According to the power that worketh within us. To him we give glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forever. Let every heart say amen. 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 
and amen. amen. Go in peace. Grab somebody and tell them how much you love them. Tell somebody how much you love them.